All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I'm back even yet again doing more car judgment of the cars that you guys have sent to me. So before we get into it, there's an email down at the bottom of the screen. If you would like your car judged, please leave it in an email there. Um, and if you guys are unaware, I do reviews on this channel. I do car reviews that is. And so if you are okay with me driving your car, coming out to you, driving your car, reviewing your car um, to be featured on my YouTube channel in its own separate video, uh, please leave your contact information, your location, and information um, in the emails because I write down every email and no matter where you are if you're even not near Chicago that's fine because I travel the country pretty frequently so we are getting back into judging more cars if you'd like to send it in email at the bottom all right so this is from Alberto hey my name is Berto love the videos seen some of my friends cars reviewed by you this is my 1995 Mustang drift build and has a 5.0 currently not drivable I'm waiting on a built Astro performance transmission to come in and I'm about to start taking the engine apart to refresh it before I throw it in a cam and supercharge it wouldn't mind having you review it sometime when it's done I can't put my finger on who you're friends with that I'm friends with, but I have 100% for sure seen your Mustang before. And I have to be honest, SN95s, which I believe is the correct term for this chassis, this sort of chassis body style of Mustang, which I haven't reviewed yet, um, is my by far least favorite. However, somehow you have made it actually look good. I think you've modernized it a little bit, which definitely helps the seats, the interior, the hydro, um, the color is, it's a great color. I love the wheels. And I think something about the headlights, I don't know if you did a different front bumper or maybe it's the hood scoop. I don't know what it is, but this car actually looks really, really good. Um, and sort of destroys my previous sort of connotation about SN95 Mustangs. So yes, definitely um, when it's running, let me know at FBZAC on Instagram or email me here, whatever it is, um, because I think driving that, th this would be really, really cool um, to drive. So thank you, Birdo, for that. And I can't put my finger on who we're mutually friends with and it's bothering me. I can't, I don't know if it's Alex or... Matt. Ah, that's going to bother me all day. Next up from Jake. This is my 1995 Jeep Wrangler YJ. It has a 2.5 liter paired with a five speed manual. I like YJs. I think YJs are sort of, when I think of a Jeep Wrangler, this is the sort of Jeep Wrangler I think of. It predates the, what did I drive? A TJ? Because it, YJ, TJ, JK, J, L. Or J, yeah, J, L is I think is the current one. Anyway, I love the square headlights. I love older Jeeps like this. My good friend Ethan used to have one of these and anytime he would shift, the headlights would turn off and then turn back on when he was done shifting. It was the weirdest thing in the world. Um, but I like this. This thing looks super, super clean. This is going to be a collector's item, sort of like the CJs have become. I think this is going to be a collector's item in a couple of years. So I absolutely love uh, the YJ. So thank you. Next is from Caleb. He says, hi, Zach. My name is Caleb and I am from Ohio. I will be out in Ohio uh, whenever this quarantine is up to review a couple cars and I'll be in Pennsylvania as well. So let me know. Uh, I have a 2012 GTI with 52,000 miles that is running a stage two Unitronic tune. I haven't heard of that company. Uh, I'm going to be changing the tune soon as I'm not a huge fan of it, but as it sits, it should be making about 260 to 280 horsepower. It'd be super cool for you to rate it. I absolutely love these GTIs. I love GTIs in total. They're short, wheel-based, fun, quick little hatchbacks. Um, I believe this should be the 1.8, if I'm not mistaken. Um, if you're looking at other tunes, I have driven one of these with an APR tune. Very, very good. I, I love that car a lot. Um, and so I would highly recommend that. But yeah, this thing looks absolutely great. And uh, since you're in Ohio, if you uh, are open to me reviewing it, you know, let me know. I'm sorry I'm going to butcher this name. Farhead? Farid? I'm sorry, I'm horrible with names, but he says, hi, I'm a relatively new subscriber to your channel, but so far I'm really liking the content, so keep it up. Anyway, I saw your most recent video about sending in subscribers' vehicles, and I thought I'd chime in. I have a 1995 Toyota Camry V6 Coupe, and if you're interested in reviewing it, I'm 100% open for a review. I am in the blank area, if that helps. Dude, we could be neighbors, based off the area that you just said, because um, he gave a very 
oddly specific area. Very oddly specific. So that's neat. I will definitely film this car uh, once this quarantine is up, if you're still open to it at that point. Some background on it. It's been in the family since the early 2000s, I believe. I remember this car being around when I was young and riding in it when I was still in a car seat. So it's crazy that I ended up with this as my first car. I received this car when I was a senior in high school and I've been driving it ever since. 175,000 miles when I got it. Now it's at 218,000. It's in decent condition for its age, although the driver's side quarter has a massive dent from getting backed into a few years ago. I plan on driving this thing into the ground. I've been saying for the longest time that I'll get rid of this car when it lets me down, but so far it hasn't. This is really, really cool. And I will definitely review this car for two main reasons. First of all, Camry coupes are unicorns. They are absolute unicorns. I remember I saw one at the mall once and I stopped and took a picture of it. A 1990, you know, whatever Camry coupe, super, super rare. Plus with a V6, it's got to be decently quick. Um, the second reason I would love to film this is because my childhood best friend had one of these as his first car and he's two years older than me. So I remember riding around, his was a four door, of course, um, but riding around in one of these for, you know, the, the amount of Taco Bell and Wendy's and McDonald's and GameStop and Best Buy and blockbuster runs that we did in a car like this i think driving this would give me so much nostalgia um i will definitely i'm actually gonna email you personally because i i, I really want to jump on this super cool I, i'm not sure if you're aware of it because you didn't really mention it um these are really really rare the coupe camrys are really really rare like i said i think i've only seen one in my life I did research on one a little while ago because I was interested in seeing, and they are not easy to find. I'm sure the V6 is even harder. So thank you so much. We will be in contact. This next one is from Nick. It is a convertible FC RX-7. It says 89 vert, open diff, max speeding, rods, coilovers, eBay headers, straight pipe, no restrictions, stage one Xetti, clutch, modded, stock airbox, 63,000 miles on the OEM keg, still reads 70 oil pressure while cruising. Um, not super, uh, verts aren't really my favorite. However, if you're planning on drifting, it, it says building as a drift missile, what should I do for diff and angle? I will leave on the screen, the Instagram of my friend, Alex, he drifted a vert. He got it to slide beautifully. It was even an S4 vert hit him up. He will have information for you. Shoot him a DM. Next up. We have Joshua. Howdy, Mr. Rotary. Attached are pics of my 1990 Toyota Corolla AE92 Coupe, the overshadowed direct descendant of the AE86. Roast me. Ha ha. Anyway, it's pretty bone stock and in pristine condition on the inside despite its age. Also has a five speed. Only mods are aftermarket speakers, coilovers, and wheels. This car is a blast to drive. It is like driving a go-kart and of course pop-up headlights. Enough said. If you're ever in my area and if you ever find your way near me, I live in a place and if you ever find your way near me you sure can drive it yes i actually do want to plan a trip out your way later like november ish um and i will definitely keep your information this is really really cool and i'd love to drive this because you know the a86 is sort of the pinnacle of corollas right after this we're going to start seeing a transition to the economy car that we know and love today. And I'm interested to see how much of an economy car this is because it doesn't look like it. it I, I believe it's still rear wheel drive, pop-up headlights, looks pretty sporty. I would love to experience this. I have a few, I have an A86 and a 81 wagon um, that are ready to be reviewed once quarantine is over. Uh, so hopefully I would love to do the full spectrum of 80s Corollas. That would be absolutely great. I know this is a 90, but you know, things like that. So thank you so much, Joshua. I will be writing your stuff down. Next is from Tyler it says, if you're a car, I sent in a few pictures of my car earlier, but didn't realize you wanted info on the car as well. The car is a 2014 Fiat 500 at Barth. It is actually my second one. Used to have a red one that ended up being totaled. All that's done is currently a down... Catless downpipe intake and the car is extremely loud, but tons of fun. I'll send some pictures and videos. I love these Abarth 500s. Um, I think these are really, really cool, really fun cars. And I, I recently reviewed one and I absolutely fell in love. I reviewed a mustard yellow one, which I did not fall in love with the color. Um, but I think overall driving experience, these things are a ton of fun. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Next up for Keegan says, would have sent these sooner if YouTube gave me a notification for the upload. Anyway, my name is Sam and I am in an area. The vehicles I'm presenting to you are my 2019 and 2003 Volkswagen Beetles. The 2019 being the first brand new car we got with only 23 miles on it when we bought it. And the 2003 Turbo being the daily. And yes, it has the optional flower vase. And now to break from the norm, a bike. You don't have to include it if you don't want. This is my 1980 Honda Goldwing GL 1100 Interstate, 1100cc flat four, very heavy, currently getting rebuilt. These cars might be able to be reviewed. Extra picture of the Goldwing. I named her Goldilocks because everything has to be just right or else she refuses to work. Super cool. I would definitely be interested in reviewing both cars. I've never done a Beetle. I've driven one Beetle. Uh, I believe it was 2003, but it was a convertible. Um, I was DDing for a friend. It was her car. She was rather intoxicated and she insisted that the top be put down on December 20th um, here in Chicago, which is a death sentence. So I had to drive a drunk girl home in her own car um, with the top down in the snow. So that's my recollection. And it was not a turbo. So I'd be really interested to drive the turbo. I'm wondering what engines he got, if these were uh, 1.8 turbos or not. And of course, the newer Volkswagen Beetle. I like the look of them. I, I, I genuinely do. So yes, I will definitely be saving your information. I might be in your area um, sometime next year. Uh, so I will definitely take that down. Thank you for your submission. Next up, this is from Ken. Hey man, hope you're doing well. I have one of the last 89 restamped to a 90 GTU RX-7. I looked for years for the right one and this one popped up just at the right time. The owner said I could drive it from Nashville back to my house. So I went on a road st roadkill style and picked her up. I made it home almost without an issue, but was a mess of rattles and smells. I merely went to clean and strain it and then in turn remove removed and cleaned everything i know how that feeling is where you're like i'm gonna fix this one thing no i'm gonna do 18 things now so he has a huge build list here i absolutely love it i know he says i know there's even more past this if you want to see any more i try to keep it all posted on my instagram at ken rides k-e-n-r-i-d-e-s i poured my life in this thing and she has repaid me by being such an amazingly fun car this is my daily driver it's almost perfect also i'd like to make you question what is life attached picture of a six second FB was in my friend's shop getting some work done 6.08 in the quarter mile at 200 something. Those are pack billet aluminum plates. I nearly fainted when I saw the thing in person. If you're ever in the area, uh, you're more than welcome to take her for a spin. This car is the reason I found your channel. So it would be great to show her off to you. I hope you and everyone up there is doing well in these weird times. Can't wait to see more progress on Violet. First of all, the time that you sent or the, the location that you sent, I was just there a month ago. Ugh, that, that makes me so mad. Not your fault, of course, but, you know, I, I wish I could have spent time seeing your car because I was literally in that area. However, my time spent in that area, I have friends in that area, um, and so I will be down there again at some point in the future. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep your information and stuff. Car looks great. It looks really, really clean. Uh, everything in your area is clean because you don't use salt. And that's annoying to me. The six second FB is insane. The, uh, a life goal of mine is to get a billet built, uh, engine. So of course, gotta love a super clean FC. Um, the parts look great. Your build list. I'm sorry. I couldn't list it all. Um, but it's just, everything is, is great. And I'm glad you've kept receipts. You've kept it authentic. Everything on this list looks like good stuff. Um, which is of course, awesome. This one is from, I'm sorry if I butcher this name, Hampus. And I come from Sweden and this is my car. So it is a Citroen or Citron Cactus C4 from 2015. It's a 1.6 liter diesel with 92 horsepower and it does not sound much, but it works great for having less power in the US. It has been a dream car of mine to buy a cactus ever since it came out. As for the styling, you either love it or hate it. It's automatic, which is unusual here in Sweden, but I want an automatic because I injured my hand working as a carpenter. It's pretty much all original. I have installed a sound system, upgraded brakes, and changed the intake. We'll probably do a chip tune in the future. And I installed an LED light bar. This is really, really interesting. Out of all the cars I've received and, and gone through today, this is, would be at the top of my list to drive because I've never seen something like this. It does look like a chocolate bar on the outside. It looks like a Hershey's bar. But I think this is just so cool. I rode in a Citroen once when I was in Slovakia. 
And it was so mind blowing to me because we just don't get these here. I would say I lean towards a fan of the styling. I think it's futuristic and different. And when it comes to cars, I love different. It does look like there's a chocolate bar on the side of your car. Can't avoid that too much. But um, I think overall, this is super, super, super cool. Um, and I would love to get my hands on something like this uh, eventually one day because that's just that's just neat. So this one is from Parker. He says, hey, Zach, my name is Parker. I love your channel. I found it way back when Caleb had his FC. Missed that car on his channel, by the way. Yes, we all do. Uh, I deliver for Postmates and DoorDash one afternoon. I got delivered to a house and saw this little blue Mazda sitting in the driveway. I had never seen an SA taillight, so at first I was confused. I went up and gave them the food and asked if they wanted to sell it. Long story short, I ended up buying it. It's a 1980 with a clean title, bridge ported 13B and a five-speed trans. It's still sitting at the guy's house, so I don't have any better pictures. If you wanted to come to his location, I would love to have you review the car. It has basically no interior except the seats and harnesses and the gauge cluster. It is lowered on cut springs. I have no idea what brand the wheels are. I want the gold honeycombs like you have on Violet. So those gold honeycombs are Autobahn or Weds, W-E-D-S, Autobahn wheels. Um, they come up quite frequently on like Facebook Marketplace and stuff. Uh, and you can get them in the 4x110, which is your bolt pattern. Really, really cool. Obviously a resprayed car. This is not a factory SA color, but I think it's really neat. Um, love the red interior and a bridge ported 13B is really going to, that's going to be fun. Um, it might be hard to daily drive, but it's going to be fun. Next up, this is from Frosty Focus. Hey, I wouldn't mind a review. I appreciate constructive criticism. It helps me decide on new routes to take my car. Also helps me understand what I like a little more as well. And sorry for the overflow of pictures. Wasn't sure how much you'd want. Thank you. So this is a Focus ST. I love the Stay Puff banner. Um, I actually have a... Uh, a piggy bank that is a Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. I love Ghostbusters. It's my favorite movie ever. Uh, that's a real true thing. Um, it's probably, like as a kid growing up, like Ghostbusters was the best movie ever. I like it. You know, I think the biggest thing for me with, with the Focus STs and Fiesta STs, which I'm pretty sure that's a picture with Jared. His Fiesta, I actually reviewed that Fiesta ST. Uh, wow. Almost three years ago at this point. Um, hope you and Jared are doing well. I haven't seen you guys in a while, but there've been no meets. So once meet season starts back up, um, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys. But, uh, I think the biggest thing for me, focus ST wise is just keep it simple. Don't overdo it. Um, don't try to stick out too much. I think, Focus guys, Focus ST guys have really become the tryhards of the car community. And that's because I think these cars make such great power and they're pretty affordable that a lot of people can get their hands on them. So I like the Stay Puft banner. I think maybe a switch up of wheels. I don't know, maybe actually go a more rally. Personally, for me, if I had a Focus ST, personally, I would go more rally. I would actually keep it stock suspension or even lift it, get some like OZ racing wheels put four fog lights in the front uh grill you know I, I like the mud flaps that you currently have i think you know yellow out the fogs i think that would be a little bit more different because not a lot of people um tend to do that it's just if you are going to do a rally build just try to execute it as much as possible buy good quality things wire up everything properly or else it'll just look half-assed and that's you know no one wants that but thank you for your submission Last but not least, he says, hey, it's RJ again. I sent in some RX-7s a while back for a video of yours. I've done a few changes, but nothing crazy. I just love to drive it. I sold the Turbo 2 for another... I sold the Turbo 2 to another enthusiast a while back. My newest addition is my 1978 Firebird, working on building it into a Trans Am tribute car. This is really, really neat. Uh, this is really, really cool. First of all, we'll talk about the FC. I like the FC um, once that front bumper is painted. I love that sort of cherry red color uh, that he has on the car. Looks great. I do vaguely remember this car um, that he sent in a while ago. Great. Now, the the Firebird. This is really, or yeah, Firebird. This is a Firebird. This looks really, really cool. I would love to get my hands on something like this. Um, I think it's really, really neat. I think it's such a cool piece of American history. Um, and just, you know, this was when Pontiac was Pontiac, you know? And so, uh, that is a really, really cool, neat car. I love the fat tires on the back too. So period correct side pipes, um, the whole lot. So thank you so much, RJ, for sending that in. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. 
If you would like to submit your own car, the email is down at the bottom of the screen. Again, if you're okay with me reviewing it, driving your car for its own unique video, uh, you can see all the other car reviews on my channel. Uh, definitely leave your contact information and location uh, in your emails. So, and just let me know, hey, I would be interested in having you review this car, things like that. Um, and so thank you guys so much for your input, for your cars, and I look forward to seeing you guys again. Take care, guys. <laughs>